my wonderful artists. Today I'm going to show you how you can make two different types of drawings using a photograph of your pet. Here's a picture of my dog Rowena. I just printed this off from my smartphone um, and I printed it in black and white because you don't really need the color so that saves a little ink. If you can't print a picture of your pet like this, you could use a photograph you already have at home. You could also use a photograph from a magazine or a calendar or a book. So for my first project, you're going to need that photograph and a sheet protector like from a binder. And you'll be able to wipe it clean when we're done and put it back in the binder. You're also going to need a marker, like a Crayola marker that's water-based. And using the sheet protector and your photograph, you are going to be doing a really cool printmaking project. Here's a print of my doggo that I made from this photograph. And here is my second print, and I've already finished this one with color. Um, so that's the cool thing about this. You can make as many prints as you want. Printmaking is a little bit magic like that. So you can make as many prints as you want and then color them in different ways. I finished this one with crayon. The second project I'm going to show you is just how to look at your photograph and use simple shapes and lines to draw your animal. So there's my dog and I added a background to this when I added her bed. And then the last step would be to color this with whatever I have at home. So very simple projects that you can use with supplies that you probably already have at home. And as always, just remember to have fun practicing and to use whatever you have around you. Don't worry if you don't have the same supplies as I do. Your first step is going to be to put your picture into the sheet protector. Just slide it on in. And then you're going to use your water-based marker to trace around the important parts. Now, since this is a water-based marker, it will wipe off when you touch it. So you want to be careful of that um, so that you don't wipe off your ink when you are drawing. Just get the important parts of the outlines. You need to let that dry for a few minutes after you're done tracing. And the next step is to pat your paper with a damp paper towel. The point of this is to get your paper damp, not wet. Place your damp paper on top of your sheet protector and rub with a flat hand. Make sure you keep it in place while you're rubbing so it doesn't move your print around. And the cool thing about printmaking is you can make more than one. You do have to make sure that your sheet protector is dry before you draw on it again with a marker. After you're done printing, then you can experiment with how to add color to your prints. Be sure you let your paper dry before you mark on it with any other supplies. It will rip the paper. I just used a black Sharpie to outline so that my lines would be uh, darker and also to add some details that I didn't get in my print. I knew I wanted to add a background to this. I was thinking about how Rowena is always barking when I'm trying to be on Zooms or doing videos like I'm doing right now. So I decided to add some action shapes uh, like you might see in a pop art piece. My fifth graders should know about pop art. So I just added these uh, kind of explosion shapes and then added the word ARF to it. Any um, mistakes you make with the Sharpie, you're just going to have to roll with and change it up. If you look closely, you can see a few mistakes I made with my lettering. But when it's all finished, you won't be able to tell. Next up is my favorite, add color. Use whatever you have at home to add some color to your design. Try blending your colors. I stuck with um, primary color scheme to give a shout out to Pop Art. 
Um, but you could pick whatever colors you wanted. I thought it would be fun to have multiple prints. That way you could experiment with making your doggo or your cat or whatever pet you have different colors. All right, we're gonna switch gears here and draw from a photograph using simple shapes. So get your photograph of your pet back out. Here's mine and here's my finished drawing and I'm gonna take you through the steps that I use to make it. My first suggestion is to start at the top of your dog's head and position that on the paper at the top so that you know you have enough room for everything else. Use curved lines. Your pet is probably not full of straight lines. So I started at the top, did the curve for her head, and now I'm looking at her ears and noticing that they are fluffy. Here's the curve of her face right there. And go ahead and block out the eyes. So that will kind of help you place the rest of your pet's face, no matter what kind of pet it is. And the nose too. A dog's nose is at the end of a muzzle. So if you have a doggo, look at what shape their nose is and how long the muzzle is. I have a golden retriever, but you may not have the same kind of dog. My dog loves this bone. She's had it since she was a puppy. It's a huge stuffed bone. Uh, so it's fluffy on the end. And I just looked at the shape. Just break it into simple shapes. This bone has a long uh, rectangle in the middle. And then those bone shapes on the ends. You can always go in and darken um, the darker parts like the eyes and the muzzle or the, the nose rather later. Um, if your dog is dark in color, like black, I wouldn't get overwhelmed with adding too much color at first. Just do the outlines. So now I've moved past the bone. Um, I wanted to point out that I drew the bone first before I drew the body because the bone is in front or overlapping the body. And I went ahead and scooted down on my paper to get the bottom of her paw because I wanted to make sure that I got that the right length. You might draw your legs too long if you start from the top of the body. So go to the bottom of the leg and work your way up, just like we did by starting at the top of the dog's head. You want to start at the bottom of the leg and work up. I use these fluffy lines because my dog has really fluffy fur, especially since we haven't been able to go to the groomer lately. So I want to get that texture down. Some dogs have long fur, some dogs have short fur. So you pay attention to the detail on your pet, whether it's a dog or a cat or maybe a bunny. Um, they all have different types of fur. So here I'm just looking for details that make my dog look like my dog. Rowena has a fluffy tail, so I wanted to include that even if it goes off the paper. That's okay. And I am going back in and adding some floof, some little whiskers. I could see tiny whiskers in the photograph, so I wanted to add those for texture. And I'm taking a step back. Always take a step back and look at your progress. I noticed, wow, I don't have anything in this big empty space. So I thought about things my dog always has around her, and that is her big bed and some more toys. So I added a ball, did a little shad -ish shading and lines in there to make it look more realistic. And then I noticed, oh my goodness, I have drawn the bottom of her muzzle overlapping in front of the bone. So I went back in and darkened that and elongated or made it longer on her mouth so that it looks like she's holding the bone. And there would be some shadow in there anyway where her mouth is overlapping the bone. So this just points out that artists do make mistakes. Even your art teacher makes mistakes. And part of art is just trying to make our mistakes work. So if you get frustrated with a part of your drawing, look at it like an artist and see what you can do to change it. Your drawing shouldn't look just like mine because we all have our own pet that we love so much. And I want you to represent your pet in a drawing. So don't get frustrated, just take your time and look at the lines and shapes. Mm -hmm. 
Here are my tips for drawing your own pet. Start at the top of your pet's head. That way, you know how big everything needs to be drawn on your page. Use curved lines. Animals are from nature and they don't have ruler straight lines. Make mistakes. Artists make mistakes and they also make them work. Look at the shapes and lines you see in the photograph and look for details to make it look like your pet.